Hello, this is Jilly Bling of JillyBling.com and I have a project to share with you today using the Dragonfly Garden Bundle. Um, in the mini catalog it's on page 27 and it comes with a really nice stamp set and then also if you want the punch you could bundle them together and save 10%. You know the bundle is only $36.75. Usually bundles are up over 50 so that's great. So here are the projects. This one I saw on Pinterest and Gail Ellis did it um, on a square card using navy. Um, instead, I have a lot of um, pretty peacocks, so I wanted to use pretty peacock as the primary color. But isn't that pretty with a dragonfly? Big and a little one. And when you look at the punch, see there you can see it. The big and the little. And at first when I saw this punch, I thought, well, wait a minute. In the stamp set, there's not... There's only one size dragonfly, but I'll show you how to get the little dragonfly in just a minute. So this one, like I said, it was inspired by Gail Ellis. And it also uses a stamp set very, I never know how to say that, Versailles. It's a pretty, it's elegant, kind of romantic stamp set. And then I also, well, this was my first card when I was trying to make it a little bit different than what Gail made it. And I didn't like how it came out. Maybe it's because I love this border. And that border is, look how cute these are. It is called Stitched with Whimsy Dies. And I was assuming that they would cut it out in the shape, but they don't. They just um, put little stitching on the paper. So then I hand cut it and I did the sponging using the new blending brushes um, and I did it a little bit heavier than planned um, but this one I consider a flop. Just saying. So then I made this one and I really I think this might be my favorite out of all of them. And that is using the blending brushes in Melon Mambo and also Pumpkin Pie. You like that little dragonfly? Okay, this one is my favorite. <laughs> and this one is sponged using grape and melon mambo. Okay, so let's see. These are the blending brushes and we'll use those in just a minute. This is my example of the little mini dragonfly punch. Um, I'll show you about that in just a minute when we go to do our dragonfly. Okay, so dragonfly garden. Very vintage. Um, I use my little color chart for the blends. It helps me decide, for instance, what color do I want to do the dragonfly. And seeing all my blends off to the side, I could see the cap. Um, but for me, it just it's easier to see it on Whisper White Paper. It let me know what colors will go together well. And also on this card, this um, word label is from Tasteful Labels. We'll use that. Stitched Shapes is for this circle right here underneath the dragonfly. And then also layering circles will cut the outline for the dragonfly. And when you look on the samples, all of these are using the vintage set with the script. And this one is using the dragonfly garden set. And today's sample, let's do one using this. Okay. So here are the papers. This is to stamp the dragonfly on. So I'll stamp two dragonflies on here. Um, the set has two different dragonflies. Both of them fit in the punch. So today I will use this one here. This one kind of has wavy lines through it. And those are a little bit more um, staggered and planned. And these are very whimsical. So I think two of the samples already have this, so I want to use one more using that. 
I'm going to use Memento ink because I'm going to color in using blends. So let's get our dragonflies stamped. Then I'm going to do another dragonfly down here. And I just need the center part of it, so it's okay if it's stamped off the edge. Now use the punch. So I'll start out doing the little dragonfly. So if you just line it up over the top. Try to get it as centered as you can. And I'll show you a good and a bad example in just a minute. Um, if ever you have a paper and it doesn't, it's not big enough to let you maneuver where you need it, you can always make a handle. So this is now my handle. And if that doesn't work, okay, we'll say that you have this paper and you can't get it in there, you can always use a post-it or make a, a handle and now it will fit just fine. I do that all the time. Okay, there's my dragonfly. Okay, so I was talking about a good and a bad example of the dragonfly. Where is that little one? Here it is. This was the first one I stamped and punched. Oh, you know it's a different one, but that's okay. One of the dragonflies in the set, one has a filled in body, a black body, and then this one has a light body. I think this one is a little bit easier to make the little dragonfly out of. But don't let that stop you. You certainly can make one with the light colored body. Um, so I think I should have dropped it down a little bit lower because I have these spots up here of just plain white paper. If I would have dropped it lower, I have um, a pattern all the way up to the top and all the way down to the bottom. And then you're thinking, well, his head probably should be like this one, dark, but using a blend, I could just fill that in and that's what we'll do. <clears throat> so this paper here I will cut out the label and I'm going to cut it out before I stamp it. Usually I stamp first then cut it out but I saw um, my girlfriend do a little trick. She, she said she saw it somewhere on the internet, wasn't sure where. Um, but let me show you about that. So here it is cut out, and before you pop it out of the die, so say it was still nested in there, take your bone folder and from the underside, just follow the shape right here, and you're adding a whole new little layer of detail on, and it kind of makes the words look like they're on another piece of paper kind of popped up. Here, I'll show you in just a minute. Okay. Look at that. So on this side, you could see the indent, but on that side, look how it's popped up. One more detail. It's pretty. Okay, and... This paper is a stitched circle, so that is what the dragonfly is going to sit on, so I'll cut that out. And in here, I have a bigger paper and a smaller size. I'll cut the circle out, maybe in the middle. But when you look at the samples, you could cut it out a little bit higher. Oh, not that sample. Or you could cut it off way over to the side. 
which way should I do this card? I think I'll do it up and down. So I'll cut this one out right like this. Okay, so that, this fits in just fine. Um, this paper, I don't know if you could tell that this is textured. So I'm going to texture it using Tasteful Textile. And there it is. Okay, and this is for the inside. So I'll fold this in half. And I know it's white on white on white, but when I apply the color with the um, blending brushes, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Okay, so this one I'm going to, um, I chose purple, so I'll probably have a purple dragonfly and baby dragonfly. But let's start out with the blending brushes. So those are going to be on this little half paper. And this time I want to use pumpkin pie and pumpkin pie and saffron. I really don't have a plan yet what how I'm going to do this. So this one, the sponging, I have it heavier up here, a little bit down here a bit on the circle. This is purple and pink, very soft, purple, pink, but this one I have the center is pumpkin pie and the outside is melon mambo. I might try to do something like that. So I don't know if it matters if you start with the light or the dark, um, but I am gonna want um, color on my circle so, this is just a hint if you want to do this, but you don't have to. I'm going to stick it on to lightly attach it to this inside layer paper. <clears throat> and if I get ink on this paper, it's fine because I could turn it upside down before I put it into the card. But that way I could sponge them all at one time. So I think I'll start with the um, pumpkin pie and apply some color and these I found that I like the sponging to be a little bit lighter because I still consider this a fail it's very very vibrant and if you like that that's great um, but I like these how they're a little bit softer so I'm going to aim for that okay so I loaded this up with ink by just rubbing it on here then I'm going to get off the ink off of the tips of all those bristles and start off the paper. And I'm not putting much pressure on this at all. I think if I put more pressure, it would be darker. I do want it a little bit darker on the edges. And it looks like I'm kind of running out of ink on here. There's a hint still going on. I'm going to get some more ink. And again, kind of get it off the tips. Start outside. It's a little darker than I wanted, but who knows? This might end up being the best one ever. Just a few days ago, I did a more blending with the blending brushes, and I think maybe it's kind of my favorite thing lately. Brand new brush, they're so soft, and it's more like little hairs. They're nylon. Um, they're different and better than makeup brushes, because I guess a lot of those little fibers come out, and we don't want that. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do it in the middle, but again, I want to get the heavy ink off the tips. 
and I'm having a really light touch to start. Can you tell the difference between the pumpkin and the saffron? Or are they looking the same to you? I might need to go back with more pumpkin pie. It's kind of like I'm filling this whole thing in. I was hoping to leave some white. I might go in with more pumpkin pie. See if there's some still on here. It's kind of pretty. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I had to do the inside, but I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so this little paper has served its purpose. And yes, there's some ink on there. So before I forget, I'm going to attach this to the inside of my card with ink side down. The first few that I was doing, I didn't attach it, and I just went back in separately later and did the circle, and they were very mismatched. Okay, so on here, if you know all of these, I have it sitting here. At this time, I might do it a little different. I like change. Memento ink, and I want that big daisy. I think that's a daisy. Oh, but you know what? When I'm looking at the stamp, to me this side seems flat, and the branches are kind of going that way. So I'm turning it back. Change my mind. Good thing about our hobby. You do whatever you like. That turned out so pretty. See if I do another one down here, I don't know that it's going to show. I'm just going to leave it um, because the words are going to go there. Okay. There's a little stick them on the back of there. If ever you have something stuck, if you give it a twist, that's an easy way to release the stick. Okay, so this will go here, here. Yeah, I think it's good that I didn't put the flowers there. See, this one's turning out just like this one. Right there. So the words for this one, how about thank you? This little dragonfly off to the side, I kind of like how he's more like an emblem. I'm going to do this one. Where's the good one? Right here. And I will do it on this side. So the thank you, I'll put it in black. Just a minute. A little fuzzy. That's a nice font. Perfect. And um, I was about to put the words on the inside, but it's better if you do the blending first and then the words. So that's going to go there. This will go here. Okay, so for coloring my dragonflies, I'm going to do black, light. If you do black, dark, it's just like a Sharpie, and any of this detail, see those little dots? I would lose those. Okay, there, now he has a head. So I'm going to do these in purples. Where's my chart? I have Posy and Heather. Posy is more of a pink. And Heather is darker. So I'll start out with Heather, Heather Dark, 
Dark Heather. And it doesn't matter how you color it. But I want to try to get all four of these colors in. Oh, I should do it on here too. It's so small. I need just a little bit of color. Okay, Heather Light. Trying to allow room so that I could get those other two colors in here. So when choosing the colors, first of all the sponge, um, then I had the dragonflies, I tried to think of an opposite color. So that one we just did sponging in yellow and orange. And if I would have done a yellow and orange dragonfly, it would have been kind of a pretty, a, but a blob of color. But when you use a color that's opposite on the color, rainbow spectrum that's when it really pops out I probably could have done blue but I have that purple inside liner so I wanted to use purple and also I have a new purple ribbon that I like and I wanted to use that okay so that's Heather so now I'm going to do posy light and posy dark See, I'm trying to allow room for the one more color to squeeze in there. This little one doesn't have much to color at all. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of going closer to pink. But it'll still stand out against... Um, the orange and yellow. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Oop, this guy. Okay, so now to color his tummy. I'm going to do it in bronze. Okay. Butterfly done. Let's see how it looks against that background. Yeah, that's nice how it stands out. That really stands out. So I have planned on coloring in these flowers. But I don't know. It might be distracting. Let me see how it looks with the ribbon. Because the ribbon... The purple ribbon I was talking about, it's a little crazy. Kind of matches the dragonfly though. I'll just do a knot. I think I'm going to just not color in because 
See this one, how I colored it in? It's pretty. But then what are you looking at? Are you looking at the dragonfly or the flowers? I think because the dragonfly is so bold, that one's fine. But this one I'm going to, I'm going to leave it not colored. And I know how a lot of you, when you don't have to do coloring, you like it. So maybe that will be a good thing. When you're tying a knot on something, just tie the knot wherever it's comfortable for you to tie it. And then you could shift it after it's in a knot. Okay, and I'm going to put it way over here. Unless you have stick them on the back, that's not good. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so this I'm going to put on with dimensionals. Got lots of them here. Yeah, I'm using a lot of them. I'll put that right there. Then this stitch shape. See how this is a little bit heavier in the yellow? I'll put that right like that. And I'm going to put it on with adhesive just so it's flat because the dragonfly will be popped up on dimensionals. So there's a little of the pumpkin pie out there. And then just get that centered in the layering circle die cut area. Okay, where is dragonfly? See, that's coming out good. This, this one is for Chris. Chris loves purple. Quite a few people like purple. So that will go there. Oh, I'm liking how this one's coming out. That can go there. One mini dimensional, that's all that guy takes. And because this is raised up on dimensionals, I need to put glue under this part and dimensionals under that part. Mm, I'm going to use liquid glue. I think that my regular adhesive, it wouldn't hold it because it has to hold it down. Um, the ribbon is going to kind of go over the ribbon. Okay. I'm not sure where to place them yet. So that is on. So the next part is to stick on this textured white and I'm going to stick it on with dimensionals. Because um, this white paper is textured and kind of the fibers in it are broke, it um, usually it's a little bit more flexible. So a couple extra dimensionals will help support it. Okay, so there's that. Now, this one, I keep being inclined to put bling on it, but I'm trying to keep it a little bit more natural. Let's see. So this dragonfly is going that way. I think they're all pointing in. Oh, this one is pointing outward. Okay. How about right there? That one turned out pretty. Okay, so now for the inside. 
keeping that nearby, I'm going to do, once again, saffron and pumpkin pie sponging to clean up here. Okay, so I'll start out with the pumpkin pie. Orange. And get some ink on it. I don't want it to be too heavy. Just because that first one, that one was too dark. It'll be interesting to see who likes it dark and who does dark sponging and who tries to keep it a little bit light. Okay, and then next is So Saffron. Yeah, on the bigger paper, you could tell the difference in the colors. Yeah, I'm getting it heavy in color again. Can't help it. Okay. So, for the inside, you know, I didn't come up with a plan. How about this big one again? Some little dragonflies. Oh, these words are nice. So, because the sponging is done, now I'll stamp. If you stamped before, you might be at risk of smearing your words, and that wouldn't be good. That turned out nice. Okay, and then... This big one that, once again, I'm not going to color should make it easy. Just one stamp and you're done. Okay. And these little dragonflies are really cute. I want these for the inside. The more I put in here, the more I have to color. So I'm not going to put too many in there. And then I'll color them in the purple tones like the outside. Because they're so small, I'll probably do um, some posing and some heather. Because I don't think I could fit four colors onto those tiny little dragonflies. So this is the dark heather. And light heather. And you know the sponging is in the background and it changes the color just a little bit, but it's okay. And then those remaining dragonflies I'm going to do in purple posy. You know, it's about February and come early May, we're going to have a new catalog. So if you like purple posy, Get it sooner than later. It's going to go away. Yep. Okay, so this card is almost done. I will put all the products used on all of the cards and pictures of the inside and outside of all of the cards on my blog. My blog is jillybling.com and I'm hoping to do that in the next day or two. There it is.
What do you think? Came out pretty, huh? Okay, thanks for tuning in. If you can, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, have a great weekend. Bye.